Father, we worship you, Abba Father. Let your name be glorified, Jesus. Let only your name be glorified, Jesus. You are the Lord, and let your name be glorified. You are the Lord, let your name be glorified. We give you glory and honor. You are the Lord, let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. You are the Lord. Let your name be glorified. We give you glory. We give you glory and honor. You are the Lord. Christ the Lamb of God the Lamb that was slain even before the foundations of the earth were laid we thank you we bless you we worship you Father Lord God we thank you for giving us yet another wonderful privilege to gather together tonight to come and partake of the Passover the Passover Lamb of God Father, Lord God, we hand over the entire service into your hands. Have your way, O Lord. Glorify your name. 
edify every one of us. Bless us like never before. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We welcome every one of us to our match communion service. And uh, as we always do, every month as God leads us, we have a theme for the month. The theme that God has given us for the month of March is the promises, the principles, and the priorities of God. The promises, the principles, and the priorities of God. For our communion service today, before we go into the communion, we shall scratch the surface of the theme for March as we celebrate our Holy Communion for March. Let's start by scratching what are the promises, the principles, and the priorities. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4 it tells us that God has given us exceeding great and precious promises. That by this we might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And if we look at 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20, 2 Corinthians 1, 20, it says, For all the promises of God in him, that is Jesus, are yea and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. So that gives us an idea of what the promises of God are. There are so many promises of God. And his promises, they are yea, his promises, they are amen. You can rely on the promises of God. Now, let's just scratch the surface of what the principles of God are. By the way, principles in our context is a fundamental truth or a fundamental proposition. A principle is a law that applies across a wide field. Or it's a basic truth on which other truths are based. For example, it is a principle of God that God cannot lie. That is a principle of God. This principle was true yesterday. God didn't lie yesterday. God cannot lie today. And God will never lie. It remains true forever because it is a principle of God. Now, God has many principles by which the heavens and the earth are governed. We shall be looking into many of these principles much, this, this much, in God's, by God's grace. We've looked briefly at promises. We've looked at principles Let's also scratch the surface of priorities of God. A priority is a fact or a condition that is regarded or treated as more important than others. That is a priority. While the promises and the principles of God are so numerous, the priorities of God are not so numerous. And for month of March, we shall be looking at the three major priorities of God. The three major priorities of God, we'll look at them in the month of March. But for our communion service today, our theme for this service, following the theme for the month, is the promises and the principles of the Holy Communion. The promises and principles of the Holy Communion. The Holy Communion, which we are about to celebrate and which we observe at least once every month, is founded on certain principles of God. Let us look at three fundamental principles upon which God established or instituted the Holy Communion. The first one is the sanctity and the power of the blood the sanctity and the power of the blood. That's the first principle of the Holy Communion. The second principle is the principle of substitution. I will explain them briefly very soon. And then the third is the mystery of the person of Jesus Christ. 
Let's just look at these three principles very briefly. Number one, the sanctity and the power of the blood. God has made us to understand that the blood is so precious. Blood is so powerful, both in the physical, in the mental, and also spiritual realm. That is why Leviticus 17.11 Leviticus 17.11 tells us that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And he has given it to us upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. Also, if we look at Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. Hebrews 9.22 it tells us that, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood, there is no remission. And then, still on this sanctity of blood, as far back as Genesis, Genesis 4.10, Genesis chapter 4 verse 10, God told Cain that, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood crieth unto me from the ground. So, we can see from these three scriptures that the blood is extremely powerful. So, the first principle upon which the Holy Communion is established is the sanctity and the power of the blood. The second one is the principle of substitution. The principle of substitution applies where one thing or one person takes the place of another thing or another person. That is why Ezekiel 18, 20, Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 20, tells us that the soul that sinneth, it shall die. However, by the principle of substitution, God can allow an innocent being to substitute the place of a guilty being in the execution of his judgment, that the soul that sins shall die. An early example of this is what God taught Moses and Israel in Exodus chapter 12. We've read this so many times in Holy Communion service. In Exodus chapter 12, God taught Moses, God taught Israel, and by extension, God taught us that a household or a family or a parish or any gathering should slaughter a Passover lamb. And that that Passover lamb will take the place of the first son of that family. Once they slaughter the Passover lamb, they put the blood on their doorpost. Everybody inside that house is covered. And that when the spirit of death comes, it will pass over. Because the blood is already a substitute. That lamb has become a substitute. The lamb was a substitute for the life of all the firstborn human beings and all the firstborn of animals. The third foundational principle of the Holy Communion is the mystery of the person of Jesus Christ. The mystery of the person of Jesus. We see the person and the mystery of Jesus Christ cannot be discussed in a single message let alone in a few minutes like we are trying to do. But permit me just to refer to two scriptures. These two scriptures, I always call them the abridged CV, the abridged curriculum vitae of the Lord Jesus Christ. The first one is Colossians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. Colossians 2, 9 and 10. This one tells us that... In Christ dwelleth all the fullness of God held bodily in Christ. And ye are all complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Let's see a more interesting, a more comprehensive CV of Jesus. This one is in Colossians chapter 1, verses 14 to 19. Colossians 1, 14 to 19. In whom is talking about Jesus? In whom we have redemption through his blood. We are seeing the issue of substitution, redemption, the blood all coming up. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. 
Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that in the earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. And the last verse, verse 19, for it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Hallelujah. What's a very, very impressive CV. So, these two scriptures give us an idea in a summary form of the mystery and the person of Jesus Christ. So when we are mentioning Jesus, we can begin to imagine who we are talking about. We have seen his CV. We have seen how the Bible describes the person of Jesus. So now that we have treated briefly the principles on which the Holy Communion is established, Let's now look briefly at the promises. Exodus 12, 13 contained a promise of this same Holy Communion. There, God was telling Moses that when I see the blood, that is the Passover blood, I will pass over you and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. And I'm sure we know that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Passover lamb. And the blood of Jesus is the Passover blood. Therefore, the blood of Jesus, which we take at the communion, is the Passover blood. And we are able by the principle of substitution. We saw that in Exodus chapter 12, the blood of the lamb, was a substitute for the firstborn, was a substitute for everybody that was inside the house. Now, Jesus Christ, who is superior to a lamp, Jesus Christ that we have heard his CV, the mystery of the person of Jesus, in whom dwells bodily the whole Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit, they all consist in him. By him all things consist. All things by, were made by him and for him and in him. Ah, hallelujah. So, Holy Communion is not, my, my, is not something ordinary. It is something deep. It is something mysterious. It is something that is a manifestation of the mystery and power and the wisdom of God. So, we begin to marry together. Before we marry them, let's see one more promise that relates directly to the Holy Communion. In Isaiah 53 verse 5, Isaiah 53 verse 5, God made a promise through the prophet Isaiah. He said, talking about Jesus, it was a prophecy, but it was a promise that Jesus will be wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Now let's note the last one. And with his stripes, we are healed. So, we begin to see that in the blood of Jesus, healing comes. We remember one of the principles, Leviticus 17, 11, that the life of the body is in the blood. So, if the life of even a lamb, if the life of a, an ordinary human being is in the blood, we saw that when someone is weak, when someone is lifeless, when they do blood transfusion, the, be the person begins to receive life. The person begins to receive strength because the life of the body is in the blood. So if the blood of an ordinary animal can have so much power, so much life, how much more the blood of the person in whom dwells bodily the whole Godhead. Ha, hallelujah. I pray that God will begin to blow our minds and to give us a revelation of what communion is. That there are promises behind it. There are principles that establish communion. People may not know. 
People may not understand, but for those of God, Jesus said something in Mark 4. He said, unto you that are his own, unto us that are his insiders, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. And this is one of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Because of time, we are not looking at priority of communion. But like we said, all through March, we look at promises, we look at the principles, and we'll see what are the priorities of God. But suffice to say that for today's uh, service, for the communion service, that God is showing us that the blood has power. The blood speaks. The blood of Abel was speaking. It was speaking against his brother that killed him. And the Bible tells us, your Bible, my Bible, that the blood of Jesus speaks better promises than the blood of Abel. That is the blood we want to take when we want to take the Holy Communion. And then, because the life of the body is in the blood, as we drink the blood of Jesus, we are promised the life of of grace. We are promised power. We are promised revelation. We are promised wisdom. We are promised divine health. Those are all consequences of taking Holy Communion properly. When you take it with an understanding, when you take it with a revelation, those are things God has packaged together to flow with Holy Communion. The final promise that we are relying on, even as ministers begin to come so that we can pray over these elements, is found in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Hebrews 4, 16. He tells us that let us therefore, let ministers therefore, let members therefore, let our brethren who are watching wherever you are, come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. When you come to take Holy Communion, you come boldly. You come with this revelation. You come with this understanding that as you come to his table, you will be obtaining mercy. You will find grace. You will find help in time of need. Father, Lord God Almighty, we want to thank you for giving us the privilege to stand before you to celebrate the Holy Communion for March 2022. Father, we have prepared the bread. We have prepared the juice. We ask that by the mystery of the communion, by the underlying principles by which you ordained the Passover meal and the Passover blood, Father, let what we shall take tonight let it be the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. As we receive it, you have promised us, you have told us as a principle that the life of the body is in the blood. As we shall drink of this blood, we shall receive life. We shall receive strength. Those who are sick, they will receive healing. Those who, whose body or their minds, or their souls, or any aspect of them is not whole. Father, we will receive wholeness. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. For my brethren at home, even as the ministers here in the temple are uh, going around to serve those of us who are here. I encourage you to just dash to your kitchen or wherever you have prepared your bread or crackers or biscuits and your ribena or malt. Get something edible that will stand for the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. The standard practice is a small piece of bread. And get your drink and together we will celebrate the body and the blood of Jesus. Together, we will partake even of what God has prepared, what he has ordained even before the foundations of the earth. Choir will lead us even while we quickly get this and we'll take together.
Jesus, 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 what a wonderful Savior. Precious Jesus, Jesus, how I long just to praise you. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Glory be to God, glory be to God, Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Glory be to God, glory be to God, glory be to God, Jesus, 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 what a wonderful, what a wonderful Savior, precious Jesus, 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 how I long just to praise you, hallelujah, 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 glory be to God, glory be to God, hallelujah. Have we all been served? Is there anyone yet to receive bread or wine? Okay, shall we all rise on our feet, please? I will read for us from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I will start from verse 27. It says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we will judge ourselves, we should not be judged. So before we take, we have seen the foundation of Holy Communion. It's very deep. It is something God takes very, very highly. And he wants us to treat it the same way. We are not to take anyhow. So for the next minute, please just go to the Lord. If uh, the Holy Spirit reminds you of anything unforgiveness, you've done something, just ask the Lord to forgive you, to be merciful unto you. You want to take the body of him that in whom dwells bodily, the whole Godhead. That is what you want to take. You want to drink the blood of him who is the head of principalities, the head of powers. We must do it with that seriousness, with that understanding of this deep mystery. He says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. But if we confess, he is faithful to forgive us. Father, Lord God, your children have come before you. Whatever it is that is standing against me, against any one of us, by your mercy, Father, be merciful unto us. Father, let the blood of Jesus cleanse us of all sins. And if there is anyone watching us, if you are not born again, this is not for you. The Holy Communion is meant for those who are born again. If you are not born again, please don't partake. Sort out the question of your salvation first. For all those who are born again and who have confessed their sins, I will continue to read for us from 1 Corinthians 11, 
from verse 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took the bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take it. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Shall we together take of the body of Jesus in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit? After the same manner also he took the cup when he had sobbed, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye, as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Shall we together, as one family, drink of the blood of Jesus in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Let's now begin to thank the Lord, thank him for the revelation he has given us of the mystery of the communion, of the promises, of the principles that made God to establish the Holy Communion. That now that God has shared that with you, with me, it will not be lost on us. The Holy Communion is meant to be a Passover. As you have taken it for much, death will pass over you. As you have taken it, you are standing as a representative of your family. For your family all through this month. Because you are covered by the Passover blood. When the agent of death, when the angel of death that will fly around March, the one that wasted by noon, the one that wasted by night, they will pass over you. Because you are secured. He said, blessed is he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. He will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. You are already dwelling in the secret place of the Most High. All through this month, you will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I pray all the promises of the Holy Communion. As the Lord lives, he says the promises of God in him are yea and amen. Those promises will answer over you. It will answer over your family. It will answer over our church. For our brethren who are watching online, the promises of Holy Communion will become reality in your lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. The principle of substitution, it will speak for you. It will speak for me. The Lamb of God has been slaughtered for us. He has been killed so that I will live. Because the Lord Jesus died for you and died for me. I will live, I will not die. You will live, you will not die. All the promises of God concerning you, they will be established. They will not remain mere promises. They will become reality. Your expectations will not be cut off. God will establish your expectations. This month of March will be unto you, will be unto me, will be unto our families. The beginning of months, in the name of Jesus, God will bring to pass those things we have been looking forward to. As God granted Israel favor after the Passover meal, you will find favor. You will obtain mercy. You will obtain direction. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Same time next week, we will continue with our study on the promises the principles and the priorities of God. Join us. God will bless you as you do in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. 
Thanks for watching today's episode of our special Digging Deep. For questioning on any of our Bible study topics, kindly send a message to 080 9975 WhatsApp only, or send a mail to RCCG Temple of God Parish at gmail.com. to us.